Ron Knight can take a you know, presentation, talk about you know, the role of public relations, role of communication, what are the challenges we have, what are the challenges you see in India, what is that you know, we can learn from the Australian experience so that you know, we can become much more better professionals. With this, I invite uh, Professor Ron Knight, one of our very distinguished scholar, and I'm very happy that you know, you agreed to our invitation to be here to make a presentation. Professor Ron Knight. Uh, the, uh, the original arrangement that Marjorie was going to speak, Mar Professor Anderson, Marjorie Anderson was going to speak first, but uh, after the brilliant presentation that you heard from Professor Rao about uh, how dominant India is in the world and how you're taking over by having uh, major control of the big international, big international organisations around the world, uh, she said, you, sp you speak. <laughs> What I would like to, to say, we have much in common and we have many differences. Uh, you are developing, you are probably where we were a few years ago in terms of the development of corporate communication. Corporate communication in Australia today is faced with many challenges because the community, because many peop most people have had uh, high school education. There's very, very few that don't have high school education. Many people go to universities. Many, many people are demanding much more information from organisations, both private organisations, the commercial companies that operate in the country, as well as government departments. So that the citizens, not just the media, the citizens are asking corporations, government departments to be much more accountable, much more accountable to the community as a whole about their activities. So for corporations, it's not just keeping the shareholders informed, who've got a vested interest in, in the company, it's everybody should know what the corporation is doing. So in annual reporting, for example, there are very strong pressures that the Finance, sorry, the report of an organisation, and this is equally true for government departments, it is not just how we raised money and how we made a profit. The profit performance is a, is a percentage only of the measure of a success of a company. The other measures of success are, is the company sustainable? Have you looked after your employees? And in the annual report, organisations are expected to tell if it's a company where there's manufacturing or there's mining or there's heavy equipment, if there have been injuries, all the injuries should be reported. If there have been deaths, the injuries, so the deaths should be reported with an explanation. How did this happen? And what are we going to do? What, are we, what have we done already or what are we going to do in the future to stop those injuries or those deaths from ever happening again? The same if it's an environmental concern, if there has been a pollution. Yes, it happened. We, we admit it happened. We have, we've carried out an investigation. This is what caused it and this is what we're doing to stop it from happening again. And this is what we expect to do in the next six months, the next 12 months, and we, we will report on the results of the things that we have done. So there is much pressure for openness, honesty and transparency in all the dealings of the company, not just the handling the money, but also in making sure that that company is going to have a good long-term reputation with all sectors of the community, it is going to have good, sustainable relationships with all sectors of the community. And this is particularly true for people who might be living close to where there's a, a manufacturing operation. And there may be things going into the air. There may be d dust flying. There may be noise. There may be heavy trucks coming in out at inconvenient times when people want to sleep. So that people, the, the, the corporations are expected to change their operations to live comfortably with the community and to have relationships with the community in terms of having conversations. So these are the things that we want to do. How can we do this in a way that isn't going to upset the members of the community? So this is taking corporate communication 
as a major part of the company's business or of the government department's business or in associations of their business. It's being accountable and being seen to be accountable to a large number of people. So I've stressed the importance of having an organisation having a very good reputation, of building relationships and keeping those relationships healthy. Because if people know you, your reputation is being known, being understood, and if you're known and understood, you're likely to be subject to much less criticism. Being known, understood, people know what you're doing, appreciate that you're doing your best to do a good job, and, and if you have a problem, you can discuss it. Leads to having good relationships. And the reputation and the, repu and, and, and the relationships provide a very good foundation to go on further into the future in a sustainable way. Very often when there are new projects in Australia, somebody's going to build a shopping centre, then much effort will be made to consult the people in the community about what the owner <coughs> of that, uh, the, the block of land where the, where the shopping centre is going to go, where the developer, the, the, the company or the individuals who are going to develop that property, they have to work and get local government approval. And part of getting local government approval is going to the people having a consultation and the people say, yes, we approve. We have seen that we have seen the plans. We have an outline of what you're going to do and uh, it, <coughs> we are happy for you to go, to go ahead. Now, this is very tedious. You would appreciate going out and asking a community of, say, 100,000 people. Which this is Australia. That's a large community in Australia. <laughs> Asking 100,000 people or, or doing a survey and sampling that from that, that, that group to uh, be able to go to the council and say, yes, we have been to the community, we've told the community what we're doing and, and they are in favour before we can go ahead, before the developer can go ahead to start with the construction. So that, that's sort of the face of corporate communication in Australia is very much engaging with the community on all aspects of the business. Not just reporting results, not giving the good news, not just trying to establish a strong brand for the organisation, a brand being that you know what the, you, know, you, you recognise the company, you know their products, and uh, you feel comfortable about buying from that company or about buying those products. It goes back, is that company looking after its workers properly? Are they being paid well? Do they have many injuries in that workplace? Are they looking after the local environment? Are they looking after the local community? So corporate communication covers the whole sector of the society that that organisation, whether it's a government department or a, a, a corporate, corporate organisation, the whole the whole lot of sorry, the whole range of stakeholders out there that are impacted have to be considered in the communication process. Obviously, let's be pragmatic and real and practical. Some of those people are much more important than others. So you have to identify who are the most important people, make sure that they're informed, but that doesn't mean to say that you ignore the ones further down the road. Is that, is that a sufficient introduction? And then Marjorie might speak about the, sort of the education, but it's the different environments. As the professor said, India has a population of uh, 1.2 plus billion. billion. <laughs> Australia has a population struggling to get to 23 million. At the moment, it's sort of 22.9 <coughs> 22 million. So the societies are extremely different. I mean, this, this is 22.9 million in an area of country which is 2.4 times larger than India. And the difference, of course, is that say, most of Australia, a very large part of Australia, is very dry land. There's no water. It's uh, desert in about 50% or close to 50%. 
and the other area which is deemed farmable means that you can put one sheep on about 20 or 30 acres, whatever that area translates to in your measures. But, but one sheep in, you know, in a number of square kilometres supports one sheep. So very dry, not very usable land, so that uh, we have uh, sheep farms which run over thousands of square miles, square kilometres uh, to support enough sheep to make a farm. Difference of population, difference of economies. The, the, I see the future of India is very much wrapped in manufacturing. At the present time, your enormous advantage compared to the rest of the world is a uh, salary structure. And as the cost of living, as, the cost, as your level of education rises, I suspect that you're going to go through transitions as you're going to have to pay people more, that you're going to lose that competitive edge of, 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 of lower labour for manufacturing. But uh, those are going to be parts of the growing process and I'm sure that you're all going to be part of it in there and making the transition from a, a country with uh, people who uh, uh, do not receive the education or the employment opportunities that they thoroughly deserve um, as, with change that uh, those things will happen and uh, look out the rest of the world. I think that uh, I, I agree. You know, China, India are the powers and I think that uh, you're going to have to coexist with China. Uh, and we're, we, we're going, tiny little Australia is going to be coming saying, please sir, <laughs> <laughs> will, you buy, will you buy our product, <laughs> etc. We're going to be small players, but I think we're, we, we, we seek as a country to be a valuable partner to the emerging world. So our being here today says, OK, we enjoy coming to India. This is the fourth time we've been here, and it's, we learn. We learn very much because so much you, t you live in a, in a country where you have, everybody has good access to education and your standard of living is, is pretty good, you don't really appreciate what you've got. And we come and we see uh, how many people there are in India, the, you know, the, the life, the vitality of the people that are here. And uh, we say, uh, this is a great place and uh, it is going to be greater. So thank you for the chance to speak to you.